doing okay. Sometimes I have some internet issues, but um, I wanted to just share something that happened a few weeks ago that I know um, I'm not the only one who has experienced this, and I think it's important to share. Um, <laughs> and I kind of just had to take a few days to be a little ticked about it and, you know, finally set my ego aside and then share it. But, um, those of you that follow my page might have seen a post a few days ago about a bunch of really hard personal stuff that I'm going through right now. This is, this has nothing to do with that. So please do not, if, if, if you think what I'm about to share is earth shattering, I'm not trying to diminish the, that you feel that way, but I would never, um... <laughs> I would never let what I'm about to share with you guys completely derail my life <laughs> because you just got to roll with the punches sometimes, right? Um, but so this is this is not something that I would let me get me down for too long, but um, it has nothing to do with what I shared the other day. And, and maybe hopefully someday I will be able to, you know, share a lot of, of other struggles to be able to help you know, the reason I share my struggles is, you know, some people don't understand. Why do you share everything on social media? And trust me, I was that way at first. The reason is because of the people that I meet behind the scenes that tell me that, you know, they needed to hear the message that I was sharing to feel that they weren't alone. You won't believe how many women I talked to and connected to after I shared my infertility journey. And knowing that I was meant to put myself out there to allow them to have someone to talk to even if it was a complete stranger they had someone that understood what they were going through and what they were feeling so that's why I do this if it might seem weird to you that's totally fine it's still a little weird to me but it it go the weirdness goes away when my inbox gets flooded with people who are thankful that I put the message out there so that's why I do it but anyways um so yeah this has nothing to do with the post the other day just something else that, you know, just another little fun roadblock or, or a little little bump in the road, you know, no biggie. But um, I was at my routine, what was it, I don't know, 20 week appointment or whatever that is. And, uh, you know, they do the glucose test or whatever and I take it and I, and I failed it. And I was like, excuse me, what? And, you know, they're like, yeah, you failed it. My doctor's like, I really, this has to be false. I was really, really sick at the time. I had like a massive sinus infection. And you know, those of you that are in the medical field or know anything about diabetes, when you're, when you're ill, your blood sugars are naturally higher. And I should have known better, but I don't like to reschedule things. And I'm busy enough as is, so I didn't want to cancel and go back in. So I just went with it and I was like, oh, that has to be why I failed, right? So my doctor's like, let's just put you through the three-hour test, and I'm so sorry, you know, I know you're going to pass with flying colors, blah, blah, blah. So I go sit through the three-hour test, which is basically hell. Um, I eat all the time, and I had to fast for 12 hours or whatever that is. Um, and then you wake up, and I'm a big breakfast person. Like, the second I'm out of bed, I got food in my mouth. And... Um, you can't eat before, you can't drink water or even have a mint or anything. And so I'm just crabbier than, cra I'm like, I pray to God I do not see anybody because I am just hell on wheels right now. Like just, I wore a hat and I'm like, please just don't talk to me because I know I'm going to snap at you. Just give me this glass of sugar so I feel like I have something in my system, right? So then they hand you this, you know, artificial drink that's basically equivalent to like, five Mountain Dews and you have to drink it in 10 minutes and then you sit there for three hours with no water, no mints, no nothing. Well, they draw your blood three times every hour after. And I'm like, okay, this is like a death sentence for me because you guys, I, I, I'm not perfect by any means, but I don't eat like crap. Um, the first 12 weeks I ate a lot of carbohydrates and I had, you know, bagels and whatever, but like I'm truly one that, this might piss some people off, but, okay, those of you that aren't pregnant, tell me this, do you have cravings, or are you supernatural and you just don't ever crave anything? I think that people, like, blow a little bit out of proportion, and not to, you know, ruffle anybody's pregnancy hormone feathers, but, um... I think that they blow it a little out of proportion and sometimes abuse the fact that they have cravings when they're pregnant because 
I'll tell you, I had freaking cravings when I'm not pregnant. Like, I crave, heck yeah, like, I craved ice cream and sweets and everything. Like, I crave things when I'm pregnant or not. So, like, I don't know why it seems like a free pass to give in to those cravings more when you're pregnant. But that's just my two cents on that. Another topic. But, so, anyways, I've been pretty decent about, you know, same as when I'm not pregnant, about avoiding my cravings and, and living a pretty solid life in balance and moderation. It took me three years to get here. But, you know, I have my treats and sweets, but I also feed my body how it needs to be fed 80 to 90% of the time. So, having that much sugar in one sitting, I cannot tell you the last time I did that. So, you know, I brought, I brought my laptop and I'm like, sweet, I got three hours to work kid free, you know, like I'm just going to hang out and bust out some to-do list things and, you know, get ahead of the game. I just instantly felt like I was dying. Like my body was shaking. My brain was like mush. I couldn't think straight. I was like sweating profusely and they don't let you like walk around or anything because they don't want you to like burn off extra sugars. So I'm rocking in this chair, like, just take me now, God, like, I can't do this. I'm like, I do a lot of hard stuff every day, but I felt like the biggest baby. I was just, you know, thank goodness I didn't have anybody to whine to. I just put in my earphones and prayed to God to fast forward the three hours. So anyways, after the three hours are up, they pull me aside and they're like, yeah, um, y you failed miserably. And I'm like, um... No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. I said, get my doctor in here, you know? And, and they're like, yeah, you, you failed actually pretty bad, and and you have gestational diabetes. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't think so. And even my doctor was like, How, I, don't, I don't get it. Like, you are, she goes, you're healthier than me. She goes, you're the healthiest patient I have. Like, this doesn't make sense to me either. And, you know... <laughs> I was initially salty because I was like, okay, I, I do, I put so much into living a healthy lifestyle, not for looks, not for anything other than I know that's what my baby deserves. And I know that it, it sets Sydney up for a really healthy, um, life. And I want to do that for this baby too. And just because I'm a better person all around when I give myself 20 to 30 minutes to work out and, and I, you know, I don't know about you guys, if you pay attention to your moods, but like initially after I like have pizza or something, I'll feel super great because it's freaking amazing. But then after I'm like, ugh, like instant regret and I have learned to power through like the that h initial high and and remember what that feels like to feel so crappy and when I felt crappy like that after I after I fall off or I get so far off track I felt like I started to snap at people around me like it was their fault or like you know I couldn't accept that I was the one doing those things and I'm like this isn't fair to anybody like I just need to be you know, level-headed and, and, and even keel here, and this isn't me, and I, I'm, I'm the best version of myself when I live a really solid life of moderation and balance, so that's what I strive to do. I work out probably five, six days a week. I mean, I listen to my body, and I kind of go with the flow in pregnancy, really. I've been working out almost the same as I was before pregnancy, and haven't changed much, um, and I wanted to talk to you guys about what gestational diabetes even is and a little bit of interesting things that you might find like super shocking that that I found through my research because um here's the thing with diabetes it's it's something that's naturally higher of a risk for people in pregnancy because of all of your pregnancy hormones it causes you to kind of go into a state of insulin resistance now those of you that don't understand like um normally when we have glucose or sugar in our bodies it circulates through our systems and our pancreas um, releases insulin and that glucose it, it pulls the glucose into our cells so we can then use it for energy. When we don't have enough insulin or our body's not triggering to release that insulin, that glucose builds up in our body. And that, that response mechanism is dampered and foggy and it doesn't work as effectively. And um, it keeps more of that sugar in your blood versus flowing to the placenta to the baby. Um, so 
the other thing that I kind of have against me, I'm, there's not a lot of research out there on this either, but I have something that's called a marginal insertion of the umbilical cord. So like the placenta is like this and normally the umbilical cord comes right out of the center. Mine comes off of the edge and the placenta is like a thin pancake. So like if it's coming out of the edge right here, the thought is that nutrients aren't delivered as efficiently to the baby because it doesn't have that like good solid flow right out the center. Now again, I'm not worried about it. It's not like a crazy thing to like be scared of or whatever, but it, it made me think if it's related to this diagnosis because of how the, the um, glucose is flowing and all of that stuff. Um, typically, those of you that don't understand, risk that um, risk to the fetus when you do have gestational diabetes is that you have the chance to have a very large baby, like over nine pounds. Um, your baby at birth can also have very low blood sugar and um, high levels of jaundice, and then you, as a mother, can also be at a lot higher risk of preeclampsia or really high um, blood pressure, which is very dangerous. Um, uh, Sydney was very small. I did not have any of this, by the way, with Sydney. Passed with flying colors all, all the way through. But um, Sydney was like 7 pounds. And I am also measuring in this pregnancy. I mean, I'm measuring on, but at the lower end of the weeks that I'm in. So she's not, like, concerned about it or anything. My weight gain is, is low. But I... Everything else is measuring on track, so I'm, you know, not concerned about that either. So all of these things are really not lining up with the route I'm on in this pregnancy. Um, and, and typical people that are at risk are overweight people, people with family history, people with um, history of diabetes, previous birth to a 9 plus pound baby. So I'm like, I don't follow any of these, but... PCOS is also a risk factor. I do have PCOS, those of you that follow my infertility journey. However, I don't have typical signs of that either. Now, why am I sharing all this? Because I think that so many people who have been diagnosed with this probably felt like me, where you're like, what is wrong? Like, how? How? I'm trying so hard to do everything I can to give this, you know, pregnancy as healthy as I possibly can and give this baby the best home to grow in. You just feel really defeated and you kind of feel like a failure. And, and I wanted to share because you don't have to feel that way. Um, yes, there's a big myth floating around that fit and healthy people are not going to get this diagnosis and you can control it 100% with diet and exercise. Um, wait till you guys hear about my numbers because that's where this was really like interesting to me how this is all portrayed in our, in our, or diagnosed, I should say. Um, so long story short, what ended up happening was, you know, everybody's like, you can't control it. It's out of your hands, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. I'm okay accepting some things in life are out of my control. However, I'm not one to just sit back and be like, okay, cool. I'm just going to sulk in my misery. I, I, I'm a, I want to live in a solution oriented mindset at all times. Like what can I do? Even if I can't solve this or cure it or make it completely better, what can I do to do my part? And I think that that's what we need to just start doing as a, as a world more often in general. But related to this, that's what I started to do. So I started to do some research and here's what I found that was super interesting. So before I got pregnant, well, early on, let's say after the first like 12 weeks and before pregnancy too, um, I started doing a lot of research on, I don't follow fad diets. Let's just put that out there. I don't follow any sort of like, I don't count my calories. I, I just feed my body what I feel it needs. Um, but I started really playing around with my carbohydrate intake and I started cutting dairy and doing all these sort of things and I started upping my healthy fats. I, I got this idea through doing a lot of research on the ketogenic diet. Now, I won't say that I follow a ketogenic diet because I do eat carbs and I just eat them a lot less than I used to, not because 
I want to follow a diet where I have to eat a certain amount of things, but because I feel better that way. Um, the the times of the days that I eat carbohydrates and I focus, I am able to look at how I'm able to focus and it's crazy. Like I cut out oatmeal in the morning a lot of times and I will have like eggs and avocado and I feel so much more clear and, and mentally stable and, and higher energy levels longer in the day. And then I'll have my quinoa and my grains and my, you know, starches and all that sort of stuff with lunch and dinner because I do believe that our bodies need carbohydrates. I just choose them wisely in the types that I use and when I eat them throughout my day. Um, so I was following this diet that was heavier in, you know, fat, healthy fats and proteins than carbohydrates for quite a while just because that's how I felt best. Now, the research that I did was showing that there's an overwhelming amount of people failing this test when they're following this type of diet because their bodies kind of go into this insulin resistant state where they don't know how to burn off sugars because they're not really getting a lot of sugars, right? Um, but here's the kicker, because a lot of people on keto will eat really crappy food and think that they're, you know, they might be losing weight or whatever, but their the insides are dying. You know, you have to do it in a healthy way. Like, I still eat fruit. Um, I still, like I said, I still eat carbohydrates. It's not technically keto, but you know what I'm saying here. You have to, you have to eat healthy things. You can't just eat 100 calorie packs or this, that, or the other. So... But the, my point is that after this drink, my bl it's artificial. Here's the other thing. I should have done a lot more research because I'm so conscientious of what I put in my body. But then I sat and drank this drink that's basically like really disgusting, the ingredients that are in it. But I'm like, eh, it's a one-time thing. Like I said, I'm very 80-20. I just, I, I'm not like one to go out of my way to do this test the natural way when later that night I'm gonna maybe have a cheat meal and smash a pizza. You know, like, it's the people, <laughs> I don't know, I guess I don't want to piss too many people off here, but it's like, it, you, can, you can be like so all in about one thing and then go across the street and do something completely against the grain of what you just said and it just makes me want to scream. But I know I should have done some research, but it's got dyes and colors and things and that and whatever. Yeah, well, I also had a Coke Zero not that long ago because I wanted one. So, really? Like, I don't know. Just be human, right? So, I drank this drink, and my blood sugar could not come down. Like, my body went signal to release the insulin. Now, now that I have this diagnosis, I have to check my blood sugar four times a day. And I ate a full, huge, heaping plate of full of fruit that was probably equivalent to a hundred grams of sugar and my insulin my blood sugar was so low I had to eat more food to get it up so what that tells me I've done I've, I actually like testing it because it, it gives me <laughs> I like to see like what makes my body spike and where I'm at but that tells me that my body knows how to digest whole, healthy, real foods. It doesn't know how to digest those artificial, you know, garbage filled things, which to me, I think is a good thing. Um, but I, I've tested it religious. I'm following the rules. I'm trying not to be, you know, a party pooper and whine about it, but I've not had a reading over 124. And that was after like, I don't even remember what I had. It was like a sandwich from Potbelly or something. It was some sort of sandwich. And it had carbohydrates, it had the whole, you know, nine yards. I'm like, oh, for sure, this is going to spike me, right? Because I just want to play around and see what my body's doing here. And I can't get it above 125. But the good thing, I don't want it above that. That's the, I, I'm glad my body is not showing signs of what a true diagnosis would. However, I'm not just going to be like, oh, yeah, I don't have this and be non-compliant because I don't want to if as my pregnancy progresses and my hormones continue to rise my body really truly become insulin resistant as of now the foods that I put my bot in my body every single day 
I'm able to digest and I'm able to burn off and I'm able to handle efficiently, which is good. So that, that reassures me that I haven't been putting my baby at risk this whole time without knowing that my insulin was out of whack. Um, but it also makes me aware of how easy this is to go undiagnosed or unmonitored regardless of what kind of lifestyle you live. So I guess I just didn't want anybody who has maybe been diagnosed with this in the past to feel like they did something wrong or to feel defeated or feel like a failure because you're not alone and it, it's definitely not fun. It's definitely not, you know super great to carry this little thing around and prick your finger all day but it's not the end of the world you know it is totally doable it, it granted I don't have to change much to get my numbers normal I've continued exactly as is I've actually eaten worse just to play around and test my numbers but knowing that I can live the lifestyle that I have been um reassures me but if you if you do maybe all you need is a little diet and exercise change that that helps 90 percent of people with the diagnosis of gestational diabetes um before you have to get on insulin so please do everything in your power to take control and not sit back and just think that this is a diagnosis you were handed and you can't do anything about it because that is so far from the truth um, and I believe that with a lot of things in life. Lee, that's a good question. Um, my thyroid numbers, I haven't had my thyroid tested in a lot. And you know, here's the other thing. My stress levels right now, due to personal reasons, are through the roof. And um, I'm sure that I'm being taxed on my adrenals and things like that. Um, but I, I'm also doing a really good job at coping. Um, I have a really amazing support system and I go to counseling and I read my devotionals every morning and um, I that's part of my therapy and controlling my stress levels is my workouts and is my me time and and with ever you know a lot of people think that I'm crazy for doing this renovation right now um, those of you that are following along my father and I are renovating my basement but to me, that's a release. That's my me time. That's like what relaxes me in a weird way is working hard and and um, brings me joy. So I am focusing on everything I need to do to control those levels as much as I can control them right now. Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely going to think about like... Obviously, I'm going to see they retest you after birth and see where my levels are at and all that jazz. I'll probably do that that test if they do retest me. I will do that in a natural way instead of the drink just because I know that's now I'm very clear that that's how my body does digest sugars is it can handle 100 grams of fruit, no problem. 100 grams of syrup, not so much. Um, but if I did for some reason come off after that, I would, um, definitely get my thyroid levels and everything else checked just cause I'm a, I'm a nerd like that too. And I'm a nurse and I love kind of seeing what I have when I'm, you know, looking at what my patients have all the time, but all right. Well, that's all I have friends. I just wanted to share that if anybody, I just wanted to cheer you on if you maybe felt down in the dumps about it like I did initially just let it go girl you got this you can change it you can you can control it you can make it better and you're not alone and your baby's gonna be perfect don't worry but I love you guys thanks for listening good night